today's 3D print. Today, a little shadow from the box, we are going to build the Alpha Wise U20. This is a in-house Gearbest brand, a clone of the CR10. We're going to see how good it is. Stay tuned. Out of the box, this is basically a CR10 clone. There are some differences. The blower is different. The hot end is slightly different. Um, the bed is slightly different, but otherwise very similar. You know, it's aluminum, Y carriage, plate. I think the knobs are even the same. I might be able to use my CR10 and large knobs to fit over those. I'll find out. The control box is different. It has a color touchscreen on it. There is some shipping damage. Or at least, I don't know if it's shipping damage or if somebody at the factory got angry. Because that is destroyed. And it also destroyed the capture at the end there. Okay? Which I'm going to have to get rid of because i got to get rid of that bearing. Um, and I don't think this was done in shipping. I think somebody at the factory did this because this was captured in foam. Meaning this could not move during shipment. At least I don't think it could. Um, so I suspect somebody at the factory had to move this to get it into the right spot to fit in the foam. And they just yanked it and destroyed the coupler. So I'll have to replace the coupler. Another problem I noticed is that a couple of these um, standoffs for the bed are bent. So I am hoping that I can repair those. Why does this keep going so dark? I think it's because I'm seeing a reflection off of that metal behind me. And that's causing the video to go dark. Can we test that? No. Okay. But anyway, I'll have to see if I can straighten out these wheels and make them straight and um, go from there. Otherwise, it looks identical to a CR10. Same print volume as a CR10 as well. Then next up, we have the goodie box. Oh, full-size full filament. A little 200-gram roll. Nice. I like when they include an actual, although... Oh, that's desiccant. Okay. Yeah, it's not broken. I've received these spools where all the filament is shattered. <laughs> Let's check it out. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's some tough plastic. Damn, that's strong plastic. Nice. Yep, 200 grams. Yeah, it feels good. It doesn't feel brittle. And it's not white, thank God. Something besides white or black. It's a nice blue. I love it. And, oh, it is a U.S. power cord. Oh, it looks like an actual decent USB cord. Not that standard, ubiquitous blue cord that all the printers come with. Your nippers. The acupuncture nozzle cleaning needle. Scraper. Not sharpened. Boo. Wrenches and screwdriver. Your T-braces. And limit switch for the gantry. Ah, nice set of wrenches. Wow. That's the first time I got a set of hex keys from a printer manufacturer. And that was not, that's nice. They look good. They're ball end and they look like they're well cut. A lot of these are so cheap looking. You just tell that they're not going to work well. These actually look like they're halfway decent quality. Oh, really? Really? Spool holder, seriously? Yeah, we're not going to use that. Uh, here's one right here. There's a piece. There's a piece. And there's a piece. There we go. There's our spool holder from an Ender 3. <laughs> oh, wow. More. Oh, no, this is different. What is this? No idea what that is. Zip ties. There's the SD card, the ubiquitous little colored reader with an SD card. It is name brand, Kingston. Huh. Nothing else in here? Nope. Let's get rid of that. The thing we're going to do is we're going to fix this. We're going to finish assembling this, get it working right. As you can see, this is pretty wobbly, so I have to adjust the eccentric nuts on the wheels underneath. We might as well take the glass off so. It's lighter and not in our way. Plus, I want to see what this looks like. Is it removable? Yes, it is. That is nice. The print surface looks pretty nice. There's your 
glass and it looks pretty darn flat. I don't see any obvious bowing in it, so we'll see when we go to print it. But nice, I like that. I like the blue and red color scheme too. Uh, I did notice that one of the bolts for the bed is damaged, so I'm going to have to work on that. And I think I'll actually remove the heat bed to make it easier to work on, so stay tuned. So we're not bent, they were just loose. I tightened them up, and now this bed is nice and snug. Okay, now because this is three here, this is what the Ender 3 should look like, by the way. Just get rid of the center. It should be just four like this. Um, you have the three. Now, you can't just tighten them up because if you over-tighten up any one of these, you will loosen the other two, okay? Because as you squeeze this one tighter, you're going to push these further away. So what you do is you, once, you, once you put the wrench here and the wrench on the back side and you tighten up the actual posts, then you have to actually tighten the eccentric nuts. The three on this side are the eccentrics. So these are fixed. These are eccentric. Eccentric basically means a bolt that wobbles. The bolt is able to shift its position based on how much you turn it, which moves this wheel closer or further away from this rail. Too tight, and you're going to grind your wheels down. You're going to add noise. You're going to tear up your bearings, and you're going to overwork your stepper driver, stepper motor. And you don't want to do that. So you loosen all three until the bed wiggles. Then you pick one, and you if you grab the wheel, you'll be able to turn the wheel without moving the bed. Tighten a little bit check the wheel. Tighten a little bit, check the wheel. Eventually you're going to hit just that sweet spot where you grab this and it does not turn. The bed now moves. It rolls instead of just turning. And the other two will still be free spinning. Here's where it's important. When you tighten these two up, little tiny turns. Tweak, check it. Tweak, check it until the wheel rolls. Verify you didn't over tighten by going back to this one. Make sure it still rolls. Then do the last one. Tweak, check. Tweak, check. As soon as the wheel rolls, stop. Now you notice I can grab all three wheels and the bed rolls. We're good. So the bed is in good shape. So the next step is I'm going to put the heat bed back on the printer. I took it off to make it easier. I want to show the live stream what we were doing and I wanted to give you guys a nice easy view of how to do this. So now this bed is nice and free rolling. Okay? So now I'm going to put the heat bed back on. The base is fully assembled. I did notice that my Y carriage plate is bent. It is deformed into a, was that concave? I believe it's concave where it's bowled up like this. So at some point in shipment, something heavy got placed on top of the box, which crushed and pushed this down and held it down. Interestingly enough, the aluminum plate is totally flat. I mean, I think I can print on this. It's so flat. Now, this being bent sucks, but it will not affect bed leveling because it's a 4.24 millimeter thick plate, it is not going anywhere. So as long as um, it's not cracked or anything, this will be fine. You'll be able to bed level just fine. But that is something that GearBest is gonna wanna um, deal with, with their packaging. The packaging needs support to prevent crush from crushing the printers and shipment. Alrighty, vertical gantry installed just like the CR10 two bolts through the bottom into each of the vertical gantries and now we will install the braces a little departure from the CR10 these have threaded drilled holes for the braces not hammer nuts that's interesting so they have to be done perfectly or this isn't gonna work right so this will go on here and the bolts will screw in and thread directly into the extrusion that's a little bit different than the CR10 brackets are installed so here is our um, gantry connection points. These would connect separately. And here is our heat bed connection points. So we are almost done. I mean, it's basically CR10. So the next step is to get the control box and connect it up to all this. Stand by one. Glass is installed. All the wiring is now connected. Control box is connected. And we are ready for first power up and bed leveling and see what happens. I do have a bad um, coupler but it appears to be stiff enough that I could probably get away with a first print, and then I gotta go find a coupler to replace that. It's booted up, the axes work, and this thing actually has assist bed leveling where you touch the corner on the screen that goes to each of the corners, and it works very well. And it stays on the screen until you're done with it, and you can also hit unlock to unlock the steppers if you want. My normal way of leveling, I lift up the bed, I look at the gap at the nozzle, and I adjust it until I like the gap. And then I go to the next corner and do the same thing. Don't forget, go around twice because when you adjust one, you affect the others. 
Now we're gonna heat it up and try it out. I don't have any hammer nuts handy to install my normal spool holder on top, so I have to use their little included spool holder here. And it does not fit a normal, like this spool here will not fit. It's too tight. So I'm using the spool it came with, and I'll, I'll get some hammer nuts later and put my spool holder up there. Alrighty, I got it printing. It is working very well. Um, so far, not giving me any real problems. I only had to slightly adjust the bed leveling knobs when I did my first print. I absolutely love the UI on the touchscreen. It is fantastic. That is one of the best 3D printer UIs I've ever seen. And it's better than the Aurora, it's better than the i3 Mega. That is a fantastic UI. My first print, it is a little Marvin, and it is very impressive. This is a good Marvin. The overhangs are fantastic. The hook is clean and strong. There's the ever tiniest little bit of salmon skin. I mean, just barely there. I had to really look for it to see it. Overhangs are good. The cooling is good. And this was printed hot at 210. The bottom printed at 220. That is a good quality. That's a CR10 quality Marvin right there. This is a potentially good printer. I'm going to replace the coupler that got damaged in shipment right now and then we're going to do another test print. I decided to open it up to see what's inside here and it's a board called the Longer 3D, whatever that means. But this is actually pretty slick. If I can get this to stay upright, there we go. It's running an ARM processor. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And the LCD screen cable is nice and long, so I'll have no problem building an external enclosure for that so I can tilt that screen. I'm impressed. And it's a 24-volt power supply, 15-amp, Sompum. Decent name brand. Very cool and neatly done. Pretty cool. Latest print. Very, very nice. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. That is CR10 quality. That's a nice print. No tuning or anything. I just slapped on their cheap filament and then to get towel on it. So now we're going to throw some protopasta in it. The U20 has done the mega print. So this is the final little clip in the video. And I'm going to show you guys what it did. It is my bed leveling Marvin. And you can see that came out shockingly clean. The Z seam on the back is actually really clean too. A little overheating at the bottom in the butt crack. But that's because I was running it at 220. Then I did my favorite stubby screwdriver off Thingiverse. And you can see, very clean print. I'm very pleased by that. Very clean. Then you have the Proto Pasta Candy Apple Red um, vase. It is watertight. So I started a big print before I left. I had a problem, I tried three times, and it would not print my giant rocket. When it got to that level, it started sputtering and the interface froze up. But I'd already done two hour prints, that took almost two hours. Um, so I knew it wasn't heat or time. I suspected there was something in the slice of that particular file that was freaking the printer out. And I've confirmed that by slicing something else that big. And now I'm going to show you that something else that big. This thing is massive. And there it is. Now, you're probably wondering, why, Chris? Why is it in a bowl? Because that giant vase is freaking watertight. Watch. See it? Right there. That's full of water. It's so heavy, I'm kind of worried about picking it up because the bottom of the print bows like a bowl. It's so heavy. There's so much water in there. And there is not a freaking drop. It's freaking watertight. That's pretty cool. Now, I did run into one problem. Salmon skin. You can see it's got pretty gnarly salmon skin on there. Not bad. Not as bad as the tornado was initially. But... This printer does such a good job and has so much potential. I want to fix that. So this bad boy is going to get TL smoothers. And the UI, this is the, with bar none, this is the best implemented touchscreen UI I've ever seen on a printer. It's responsive. 
it's clean, it's easy to navigate. I love the UI on this printer. Whoever made this, it's an ARM 32-bit processor inside. Somebody suggested it might be SmoothieWare. I'm not sure. Um, I have one of my, you saw already the inside of the printer, but the UI is amazing. I hope more people adopt this UI. It's very, very good. That's it. That is your AlphaWise U20 printer. It is available today if you guys want to take a chance on it. I'm not going to say this is the cat's meow, go get it, because I just got it. I've only made five prints on this thing. So I can't really tell you this thing is incredible. But I like a lot of what I'm seeing. Everything is metal. Um, I like this metal bracket up here. That's nice instead of the plastic. That's pretty nice. The fan works well. It works very well. Cooling is fantastic. But damn, is that thing noisy. So I gotta try to see if I can get a quieter fan for that, but it's 24 volts, so I gotta be careful. But that's it, stay tuned. You will see more videos on this printer because I'm very excited about it. This thing has a lot of potential. I am definitely going to unify this printer by taking everything out of here and mounting it underneath the printer, um, Ender 3 style. And I especially love this touch screen. Great, great screen. And great interface. It's horrible like this. You can't see it. You gotta look down on it to see the screen. But um, that would there's plenty of cable in there, so it'd be pretty easy to make a 3D print to make this an angled screen. That's it. You guys have a great day.